Well, the day after Joe Biden's State of the Union address, which is by far the most clever State of the Union address ever delivered, and if you predicted that the oldest person to ever deliver a State of the Union address would go off script and extemporaneously pull the opposing party into a trap that they will spend the year trying and failing to get out of, well, congratulations, because none of the rest of us predicted that. But the day after that historically clever and otherwise successful speech will be remembered in congressional history as the day that these words entered the congressional record for the very first time in the 234-year history of the Congress of the United States. Pussy ass bitch. Those words will now live in the congressional record forever, and those words will reside in the congressional record forever as a description of Donald Trump. That is one of the accomplishments of a House of Representatives hearing called by Republicans today, a hearing whose purpose was easily dismantled by the Democrats who participated in the Republican organized hearing. Two of those Democrats will join us in a moment, including, as I said, the youngest member of the House, House of Representatives, who easily outwitted the Republicans on that committee, including Jim Jordan. The point of the hearing for Republicans was to prove that a New York Post article was censored in the last days of the 2020 presidential campaign. The proof that it was not censored was standing there in the center of the room for the entire hearing. The article about Hunter Biden's laptop appeared, as you just saw, on the front page of the New York Post. On October 14, 2020, that article was available worldwide on the New York Post website. That article had a larger readership than the New York Post coverage of the Civil War or of World War I, World War II, the assassination of President Kennedy, the assassination of Martin Luther King, the moon landing, the decision by the United States Supreme Court to award the presidency to George W. Bush over Al Gore. The New York Post's front page article about Hunter Biden's laptop had a wider circulation than any of those other stories. But Republicans claimed the story was censored because Twitter did not immediately help to increase the circulation of that article. It took Twitter two days to allow links to that article to appear on Twitter. Two days. Republicans are now pretending that Donald Trump lost the presidential election on October 14th and 15th because Twitter did not allow links to that New York Post article for those two days. And by the time Twitter decided to allow links to that article on October 16th, Donald Trump had already hopelessly lost the presidential election, according to the Republican theory advanced in this hearing today. That's one of the theories of the hearing today. The other theory for Republicans today is that Twitter blocked links to that article for two days because Joe Biden ordered them to, that is Joe Biden, private citizen running for president of the United States, somehow ordered Twitter and only Twitter to not link to that article. Why Joe Biden did not use that same superpower with Facebook was left an unsolved mystery by the Republicans in the hearing. What today's hearing ended up proving is that Joe Biden never asked Twitter to block links to that article. In fact, the hearing proved that Joe Biden has never asked Twitter to do anything. And at the same time, the Republican organized hearing proved beyond a reasonable doubt that Donald Trump, as president of the United States, did tell Twitter to take down tweets that he did not like. On September 8th, 2019, at 11, 11 p.m., Donald Trump heckled two celebrities on Twitter, uh, John Legend and his wife, Chrissy Tagan, and referred to them as the musician John Legend and his filthy-mouthed wife, unquote. Chrissy Teigen replied to Donald Trump's tweet with a tweet of her own. Here is the description of that tweet. What was the tweet about? Would you like me to give the direct quote? Yeah. Um, 
please excuse my language. This is a direct quote, but Chrissy Teigen referred to Donald Trump as a pussy ass bitch. Okay. Free speech. And what happened after Ms. Teigen posted her tweet? What did the White House do? What did the Trump White House do? From my understanding, the White House reached out to ask that this tweet be removed. The Trump White House reached out, not an agency, but the White House reached out and requested that you remove the, the tweet. From my understanding, yes. Here's the front page of today's New York Post. It echoes on page one the kind of heckling that was thrown at Joe Biden from the back of the room last night by the uncouth Marjorie Taylor Greene. The New York Post ran its version of a fact check of the State of the Union address on page five today. The first line of the fact check quotes President Biden saying some Republicans want Medicare and Social Security to sunset. And underneath that, the New York Post uses the, the label truth for an astonishing lie of its own. The New York Post in writing today said that what President Biden said about Social Security was, quote, the biggest lie of the night. No one has proposed this. That is the New York Post, founded by Alexander Hamilton, now owned by Rupert Murdoch, trafficking in a pure, unadulterated lie in print. The New York Post says no one has proposed this. Today, President Biden fact-checked the New York Post and Marjorie Taylor Greene and all of the Republicans who are lying when they say that no Republican wants Social Security to sunset, another term for expire. I remind you that Rick Scott from Florida, the guy who ran the U.S. Senate campaign, has a plan. I got his brochure right here. He has a plan. Here's what he says in his plan. Let me get open it up here. Sorry. He says, all federal legislation sunsets every five years. If the law is worth keeping, Congress can pass it again. Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. And by the way, you have a senator <clears throat> named Ron Johnson. Ron Johnson on Social Security and Medicare, quote, we should transfer everything. So we have to consider everything every year. Kevin McCarthy may be the least intelligent speaker of the House in history, but he is way smarter than Marjorie Taylor Greene and the Republican noisemakers in the back of the room last night. He was constantly signaling them to be quiet. Here in the people's house, it's our duty to protect all the people's rights and freedoms. Congress must restore the right and the... Fentanyl is killing more than 70,000 Americans a year. You got it. Yes, there's that McCarthy mouth movement that's supposed to quiet them down and failed. When Marjorie Taylor Greene and the other shouters called the president a liar for saying some Republicans want to end Social Security and Medicare and others want to cut them. President Biden pulled the entire Republican Party in the House of Representatives into a public agreement that they will not dare to touch Social Security. As we all apparently agree, Social Security and Medicare is off the, off the books now, right? They're not to be stopped. All right. We got unanimity. Social Security and Medicare are a lifeline for millions of seniors. Americans have to pay into them from the very first paycheck they started. So tonight, let's all agree, and we apparently are, let's stand up for seniors. Stand up and show them. We will not cut Social Security. We will not cut Medicare. Even Kevin McCarthy himself, by the end of that, was forced to stand 
and add his applause on the video record forever that they will not touch Social Security. Kevin McCarthy just sat there watching as the most out-of-control audience for the State of Union in history gave away all of Kevin McCarthy's negotiating points thanks to Joe Biden's written text laying a trap for them and then Joe Biden's quick extemporaneous cleverness locking them in that trap of their own making. Republican Senator Mike Lee was not one of the Republicans yelling at the president about Social Security. He was just stunned, just sitting there looking stunned that the president could ever say that any Republican wanted to harm Social Security. Today, President Biden quoted Mike Lee saying this. It will be my objective to phase out Social Security, nice. to pull it up by the roots and get rid of it. Here, here, here. Um, people who advise me politically always tell me that's dangerous, and I tell them, in that case, it's not worth my running. That's why I'm doing this, to get rid of that. Medicare and Medicaid are of the same sort and need to be pulled up.